गुड मॉर्निंग स्टूडेंट्स गुड मॉर्निंग गुड मॉर्निंग सो लास्ट क्लास वी हैव लर्न अबाउट द आर्किटेक्चरल फीचर्स ऑफ आर्म कार्टेक्स एम एम थ्री एंड एम फोर प्रोसेसेस एंड द ब्लॉक डायग्राम ऑफ दैट इज बेसिक ब्लॉक डायग्राम ऑफ कार्टेक्स एम थ्री एंड एम फोर and also we have discussed about the uh, difference between processor and core okay and also the difference between processor uh, and microcontroller and also we have learned about the memory structure of arm cortex m4 so next we will see about this memory mapping related questions so have you identified the answer for these question so what is the first question what is the size of e probe actually uh, e e probe so this is the memory structure your cortex m4 processor has 4 gb of memory so this memory region is divided into program core data core and special function registers okay so this space is allocated for flash memory so flash memory is mainly for storing your instructions and program codes okay and this is also your flash memory that is triple e or pro okay so double e pro and this will be useful to store your program codes and instruction and s ram is mainly for storing your data including stack uh data elements okay and this region is completely allocated for special function registers okay so my question is what is the size of e e probe here so this will be the starting address of e e probe and this will be the end address of e e probe so find out the difference between these two hexadecimal value and convert that value into decimal okay so that you will get a uh, total number of bytes okay convert that bytes into kilobytes or megabytes please do it can you understand my question so you have to find uh, find out the size of this particular memory region and this will be the starting address this will be the end address okay so kindly do it in the calculator so first you select the um, so can everyone uh, see my screen okay yes ma'am just you find out the difference between end address and starting address okay so what is your end address 1 0 1 0 okay and minus 0 0 that is One zero zero. How many zeros? Five zeros. Okay. So this is your answer. Okay. One zero one zero one. So thousand thousand bytes. Okay. So your e prom size is one kilobytes. So that is the meaning. is a clear students you have to find out the difference between start address and end address so in terms of hexadecimal it will represent 1000 bytes so that is equal to 1 kb so the memory size of e e promise 1 kb so just you open this calculator online byte converter calculator so you enter 1000 okay converted so this is your primary 
is 0.9765. That is equivalent to 1 kb. Is that clear, students? Yes, ma'am. Okay. So do it for flash memory. Are you able to follow? Students, are you able to follow? Yes, ma'am. Okay, find out the memory size uh, of flash, flash memory. Can you uh, can you uh, full screen the screen, ma'am? Okay, ma'am. So zero minus uh, seven uh, followed by four Fs. Okay. So convert that into uh, decimal. Okay, what is the answer? So what is the answer? Three two seven six seven. Huh? Three two seven six seven. Decimal? Decimal size? Yes. Seven along with four eggs. Five two four uh, two eight seven. Five two four two eight seven. Just you copy oh, this okay. value. Just you copy it and convert this value into bytes. Okay. Okay. Convert it. So what is the answer? In terms of kilobytes, the answer is five one one KB. So that is the answer. So that, that is the size of your flash memory. See here you have to, so uh, in uh, ARM Cortex memory structure, each memory location can hold 8 bit data. So it's a byte addressable memory, okay. So after converting that value, we have 524.287 bytes, okay. So put it in the calculator and convert this value. So you will be getting this 511 KB. So the memory size of flash memory is 51 KB. Otherwise, 0.5 MB. So both are correct. 0.5 MB. Is that clear, students? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Yes, ma Okay, find out the memory size for SFR. Thirty-two point six seven kilobytes. Thirty-two point six seven kilobytes. Okay. Now, forgetting that, just you put it put it in the chat box, ma. Put the answer in the chat box. So in this way, we can find out the memory size of each region. Okay. So generally. One KB is equal to how many bytes? See, see, these are all basics. You should interact. Huh? Thousand twenty-four. Yeah, Twenty-four. Bytes. And one MB is equal to thousand twenty-four KB. Yes, right. Thousand KB. Okay. So that is equivalent to how many bytes? One zero four eight five seven six bytes. Okay. And one GB is equal to 
how many kilobytes, how many megabytes, one, two, four megabytes. Okay, so this is equal to one zero four eight five seven six KB. Is it clear? So your Cortex Q Pro is a thirty-two bit uh, processor. So it is capable of addressing two power of thirty memory location, thirty-two memory location. So the memory size of the processor, we can able to connect the four GB memory to the ARM core. Okay. So this four GB includes your program code. Data, it's divided into, one second. So it is uh, divided into uh, program region, uh, data region, peripheral region, and some of the memory regions are allocated for debugging, okay? So data, peripheral and debug. So the 4 GP is uh, GP is divided into um, program region, data region, peripheral region and some of the memory regions or some of the memory locations are utilized for special function register and debugging components. Is that clear students? Yes, ma'am. So what is the next question? Ma'am? Yes? Ma'am, I have a doubt, ma'am. For the first uh, one, we found the size of E problem, ma'am. Oh, we took the hexadecimal value of okay, ma'am. We didn't convert it to decimal. Oh, decimal, you find out what is the value? 409. 4,000. 4,000, sir. Just you do it uh, one second. What is the value, ma? It is 1,000 bytes. Okay. So, 4096. Okay. Sorry. So, what is the answer? 4 kilobytes. Please note it down. So I made a mistake. Just you know, note it down. You have to consider decimal value, not hexadecimal. Okay. So is that right, Bharati? 4 KB? Yes, ma'am. Okay. So shall we move on to the next question? So which memory portion is non-volatile? What is non-volatile memory? Please tell me. The content won't be erased. Okay, I am getting the answer from the same students. Okay, so everyone, I want everyone to interact with me. So it's, it's like a programming uh, subject. Okay, so you should interact. Otherwise, uh, the class will be uh, like it's like a, th a theory or session so you have to interact okay so i want answer I from another person mm -hmm. which I what is what is that what is non volatile mm -hmm. the louder ma'am mm -hmm. this one the content can be changed by the user uh, actually, it's something related to power, okay? Non-volatile is a memory that retains its value even uh, when the power is removed, okay? So in this case, which is the non-volatile? Which region is the, which memory portion is non-volatile? E pro. E, e pro and flash memory. Flash memory is also a non-volatile memory. Please note it down. So 
So the answer for this question is EE probe and flash memory. So what is the next question? What does SRAM generally used for, for in an ARM core processor? Role number 32 is answer this question. Role number 32. 32 is the yes, See, this is a programming related paper, okay, and also we have parallel lab. So the lab is completely focuses on your ARM Cortex M4. You should know each and every point of your Cortex M3 and M4. So next week uh, we will be starting our lab next Monday from Monday. So I have to complete all the architecture and register components of ARM Cortex. Otherwise it is very difficult to follow the first experiment. Is that clear students? So quickly yes, add some. Yes. Mm. Yes. Roll number 32, do you know the answer or not? No. Are you traveling? 32. Roll number 32, this is coming. Where are you now? Roll number 32. See, attend the class regularly. Where are you now? 32. I'm on my argument. Okay, tell me the answer. <laughs> Just to mute your mic, 32. 33. 33. S33 connector. Ice man. Ah, tell me the answer, ma. So what is the purpose of SRAM here? So that is my question. Um, for data storage. Okay. Actually, it is used to store data, including your uh, stack uh, variables. And sometimes uh, it can also be uh, used to store program codes. So it's mainly for variables and data. Okay. And in some cases, you might want to copy program codes from a slow external memory uh, to the SRAM and we can execute the codes from SRAM also. So that is the feature of SRAM. Okay, please note it down. And next question. Um, where... um, can you please repeat it now? I lost connection. <laughs> okay, actually it is used to store program codes also, with variables, data and program codes. Okay, in some case you may want to copy the program codes from uh, slow memory devices, external memory devices to SRAM. Okay. Some for some application. Okay. Suppose if the memory external memory is a very slow device, thus that case we can copy the program codes from external memory to SRAM and execute the code from SRAM. So that is one of the feature of SRAM memory. Okay. Is that clear, students? So it's yes. mainly for uh, storing variables and data. Sometimes we can store program codes in the SRAM memory. So where is 0x743 address? Where it is located? Roll number 38. Yes, ma'am. Uh, where it is located? 743 address. Which is located in uh, which region, memory region? Flash memory or E Pro SRAM or special function. Ma'am, special function. See, just find out. This is seven four three. 
if you see the start address and end address so this address belongs to which region just you find out the memory address from this column so it clearly explains the clearly indicates the starting address and end address so the current address is 743 Where it is located? No, flash memory. No. It's very good. It is located in flash memory. And next one zero zero A B fifty eight. Please tell me where it is located. One zero zero A B. Fifty eight. Sorry, this is this is uh, flash memory. Fifty eight is there. Yes, ma'am. Now, what is the answer? Showing a one zero zero A B. Where is it? என்னப்பாங்க மைக்ரோகண்ட்ரோலர் <laughs> So any doubts? So shall we move on to the next topic? Yes. Okay. So next one is the ARM core data flow model. So this is a very general model. So this model uh, can be applicable for a conventional ARM processor and ARM Cortex M3 or M4 processor. Only the difference, some of the processor may follow varnyaman architecture and some of the processors may follow um, what is that hardware architecture okay so uh, this implementation is the varnyaman implementation so uh, where the data items and instruction uh, share the same bus here so we have only one bus so both data items and uh, instruction uh, can share same bus okay suppose if arm follows hardware architecture it uses two different buses uh, for instruction fetches and data transfer okay so this is the arm core uh, data flow model where you can see uh, the functional unit inside the arm okay so there are many representation here so this arrow so this arrow indicate uh, indicates the flow of data okay and the particular line solid line indicate the buses okay and the boxes represent uh, either an operation unit or storage area okay so these are the representation uh, utilized in the uh, arm data core model so this arrow is for data flow and also that is uh, the flow of data and the lines indicate the uh, buses it can be a address bus then a data bus and boxes the square boxes and rectangular boxes represent either an operation unit or storage unit okay so these are the features of arm processors so it is a 32 bit uh, core and 32 bit address space all the registers size is 32 bit and we have the special functional unit is a 32 bit shifter so it will perform fast multiplication and division 
okay and arithmetic logic unit and also 32 bit memory transfer so using this model we can transfer the data from register to memory and memory to register and it follows load and store architecture i will explain this later what is load and store and this is the register file component this register file component contains uh, totally uh, 16 registers from r0 to r15 so these uh, registers are general purpose registers r0 to r15 so in your program you have to use these register for data handling operations okay so we will see one by one okay and these are features of arm kernel ma'am yeah these are the features you can use you can make use of these register for your data processing operation so your operation may be arithmetic operation or logical operation so in earlier uh, 8051 generally for data processing we must use this accumulator okay your destination must be a accumulator so that condition is not applicable in arm cortex you can use any register uh, can be a source register or a destination register so they uh, provided us that is they provided 16 32 bit register from r0 to r15 okay so it can hold 32 bit data 16 bit data and as well as 8 bit data is that clear students yes ma'am okay yes ma'am so this is the first starting point of this uh, data flow so data enters the uh, processor core through data bus so this is the data bus okay so this data may be an instruction to execute or data item so either it can be an instruction or data item so this structure follows the von neumann please note it down so we are using uh, according to this uh, according to this data flow model the single bus can uh, hold uh, both data and uh, opcodes instruction codes okay and here you can see uh, so instruction decoder uh, it decodes the instruction into action that is it converts all the operation for example add so this operation is converted into action so it will tell the uh, alu to perform addition operation so it will convert all the codes and instruction into sequence of action so that is the purpose of this instruction decoder okay and uh, next one is the uh, load and store arch before uh, uh, explaining this first i will uh, complete this load and store architecture okay so arm processes are based on load and store architecture so the main drawback of earlier microcontrollers that is your cisc architectures okay so the cisc design that the most of the data processing operation can act on memory directly okay so that is the uh, drawback of your cisc processor all the data processing operation can be operated on memory so since the memory accessing is very costly so what they uh, did is separating the memory access from the data processing okay is that clear so we have uh, no, no. Two, can you say it again man uh, actually in sys processors uh, let's take uh, your 8051 microcontroller most of the data processing uh, operations can act on memory directly so every time we are uh, transferring the data between the registers and memory so every time we are disturbing the memory okay we are disturbing the me memory unit so that is the uh, biggest drawback of cisc architecture okay so in risc what they did is they are separating the entire instruction okay that is data processing instructions and memory instructions separating memory access from data processing so that is the logic of load and store architecture so we have two instruction type for transferring data in and out of the processor okay so we have two instructions load instructions store instructions 
So separating memory access from the data processing, your ARM Cortex M processes has two instruction types for transferring data in and out of the processor. Okay. So load instruction instructions copy data from memory to registers. So registers are internally located in your code. Your memory is located externally. So we have separate load instruction in order to access the external memory element. So using load instruction, we can transfer the data from memory to registers, from external memory to ARM core. Okay. Store is uh, completely, that is uh, vice versa, uh, uh, copy data from registers to memory. That is your core to memory, ARM core to memory. So data processing instruction only work on registers, not on memory. So data processing instructions only work on registers alone. These registers are not to R15. So there are no data processing instruction that directly manipulate data in memory. So that is the logic of load and store instructions. Is that clear, students? See, in our 851, so this is the one of the instruction. Move x, dptr, comma, a. So we have only one memory pointer. So every time we have to use this memory pointer to access the data elements from the memory and also we should use this accumulator as a destination for most of the automatic and logical operations. So it's a architecture is a little bit complicated. So in order to uh, provide separate access for memory, so they have provided uh, separate instructions uh, that is load and store instruction to access your memory elements alone. So using this, uh, these instruction, we can transfer the data from memory to registers and register to memory. So data processing instruction only work on registers alone, not on memory. So that is the objective of this uh, ARM Cortex M3 or M4 process. Is that clear, students? Yes, ma'am. Actually, separate yes, load. Ma yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm. Is that clear? Any doubts you have? So let me summarize. Actually, separate load and store instructions transfer data between your register bank and external memory. So this is your register bank, R02. R15 is your register bank. So memory accesses are costly. So separating memory access from data processing provides an advantage because you can use data items held in register bank multiple times without needing multiple memory access. Okay. So in contrast with CISC design, the data processing operation can act on memory directly. So that is the drawback of CISC architecture. So can you understand the significance of load and store architecture? So next component is the signed extend component. So generally all the data items are placed in the register file. So this file consists of uh, 16 registers, 32 bit registers, 16 general purpose 32 register. So these register can hold either signed value or unsigned 32 bit values. So this signed extend hardware converts a signed 8-bit or 16-bit numbers into 32-bit values from memory and placed in a register. Okay. Suppose if the data is a 16-bit data, your register can accept the value as a 32-bit value. So what this component will do is it will convert 8-bit, 16-bit numbers into 32-bit values uh, and place the, place the value in a uh, corresponding register. Okay, is that clear students?
Yes, okay. What about others? Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. So next, uh, ARM instructions have two source registers. Always your ARM uh, instructions have two source registers, RN and RM. And one uh, destination register, that is RD. So look at here. So two source registers, one destination register. Okay, please note it down. For example, move, move R2, comma R1, comma R3. So we have three operands here. Three we can specify three registers in a single instruction, two source operand and one destination operand. Okay. So here just I'm changing the operation add add R2 comma R1 comma R3. So what it will do is it will add the content of R1 and R3 after the addition. It uh, will place the result in R2. So we have three, generally we have three operands. Okay. So two source operands, Rn and Rn, and single destination operands. So source operands are read from this register file. This Rn and Rm are read from this register file uh, using internal buses. We have two internal buses, A bus and B bus. Just you look at the diagram. So we have two bus A and B. Okay. So the ARM instructions have to so two source registers, RN and RM, and single destination register. So the source operands are read from the register file using internal bus A and B. Okay. And next important component is the ALU, automatic logic unit, and multiply accumulator unit. So these two units uh, take the register value from Rn and Rm, okay, through A and B bus and compute the result. So look at this diagram, Rn is directly given into ALU and Rm is given into parallel shifter. I will explain this component later, okay. After pre-processing the data, the value is given into A. So before entered into ALU, the second operand is pre-processed by this parallel shifter. Okay. So we have uh, two instructions. One is the data processing instruction. Other one is the memory related instruction. Okay. Suppose uh, if the instruction is data processing instruction after computing the results rn and rm is given to alu after computing the result okay so this rd is returned into directly returned into the register file through this result bus is it clear students yes See, two source operands, Rn and Rm. Okay, so these values are uh, read from the register file through A and B bus. Okay, so we have two components, major components, automatic logic unit and multiply accumulate unit. So one of the operand is directly given to ALU, okay? And another one is pre-processed by parallel shifter. After that, that value is given into ALU. Mm -hmm. If the instruction is the data processing instruction, we have to use all our general purpose register. Uh, once the result is calculated, so the result is the output is returned into your register file through this result bus. So the operation can be a automatic operation or multiply operation. Okay, it can get the inputs through this A and B and compute the result. After computation, the result is returned into register file using this result bus and RD is your destination register. 
So this is for load, uh, this is for data processing instruction. So if the instruction is the data processing instruction, your ALU gets the data from RN and RM and compute the result. Once the commutation is over, the result is again returned into register file alone, not in memory. Okay. Suppose if the instruction is the uh, memory related instruction, okay, that case here it will generate the output, ALU generate the output, okay. So with the help of ALU, your processor will generate address that will be located in address register, okay. And this address register uh, role is, it will broadcast the address to the memory. And to increment the memory location, the incrementer uh, component is used to point the next memory location. So with the help of ALU, suppose if the instruction is memory related instruction, with the help of ALU, it will generate address to be held in the address register and broadcast on the address bus. Okay? And the incrementer will help to update the address register before the core reads or write the next register value from R to the next uh, sequential memory locations. Okay, this is it clear students? So this architecture supports both data processing operation and memory related operation. The data processing operation, the ALU gets the input uh, from the register file through A and B, okay, and compute the result. After that, the result will be returned into register file. And one of the operand is pre-processed by this parallel shifter. Okay. So parallel shifter is the hardware component. It is, uh, has the ability to shift 32-bit uh, binary in one of the source register, left or right, by specific number of positions before it enters the ALU. Okay. So the main objective, it can achieve a fast multiplication division by the power of so I will explain this parallel shifter component in more detail in the next class. Okay, ma'am. No, yes, ma'am. At a time only data or memory will be happening, ma'am. The, parallel, the processor can able to perform both the data transfers simultaneously. It depends on the uh, system architecture. Suppose it follows hardware means it, it can able to perform both the operations simultaneously. Okay. So it's based on the architecture. It will perform the operation. So this is a very general one. Okay. Well, which means... Uh both the uh, instruction sets can be performed simultaneously but with dif like with different instructions yes the based on your address and data bus availability okay. because uh, because here uh, for memory related operation the processor is supposed to use this address register now okay so for single bus can uh, utilize for both instruction fetch and data transfer that time uh, the simultaneous operation is not at all possible. Okay, so it depends on uh, your one Neumann implementation or hardware implementation. Okay. Suppose if the instruction is a memory related instruction, ALU uh, will generate the address, memory address. If the instruction is the data processing instruction, the operation would be completed here. Would be, would be completed in this block. So here uh, we have another loop. We can transfer the data from register to memory. It is R15 and PC. I will explain these features in later, okay? These features later are in the following classes. Yes, See, uh, uh, we have a 
16 register so general purpose register hold either data or address okay so out of 16 register 13 of them are general purpose so 13 of them general purpose so other three have special purpose That is R not to R twelve are general purpose, okay, and R thirteen, R fourteen, and R fifteen have special functions, okay. So R thirteen is nothing but your stack pointer. R fourteen is nothing but link register. R fifteen is your program call. So first eight registers are not to R7 are called as low registers. So due to the limited available space in the instruction set, so many 16-bit uh, instruction can access these low registers. High registers from R8 to R12. So high registers can be used with 32-bit instructions and few with 16-bit instructions. I registers. So R13 is the stack pointer, points to top element of the stack. R14 is a link register. It is used to store written location for functions or subroutines. And the program counter already you, you were aware of this. It's point to the next instruction being fetched from the memory. So this is the register file structure. So we have 16 registers. And 13 of them are uh, utilized for general purpose. And remaining three will have special purpose. So remaining three registers are 13, 14, and 15. Is it clear, students? And R0 to R7 are called as low register. We can utilize them uh, for 16-bit operation. And R8 to R12 are 32-bit register. We can utilize them for 32-bit operation. Yes, okay. So next class, I will explain this parallel shifter component, OK? In more detail. So it will perform left shift, right shift, uh, rotation, automatic shift, OK? We will see the uh, parallel shifter operation in the next class. Your attendance. Number one. For those who have given attendance, you can leave the meet. Okay. Two. Number two percent. One can may leave the meet. Okay. Two percent. Three. Three percent, ma'am. Four. Four percent, ma'am. Five. Number five, six. Number six, ma'am. Number six, present, ma'am. Roll number five. Roll number five. Mom, I think five has network issues. Okay, six. Bharat Ram. I'm six present, ma'am. Okay. Seven. Seven present, ma'am. Eight. Eight present, ma'am. Nine. Nine present, ma'am. Ten. Ten present, ma'am. Okay, eleven. Eleven present, ma'am. Twelve. Twelve present, ma'am. Thirteen. 13 present, ma'am. 14. 14 present, ma'am. 15. 15 present, ma'am. 16. 16 present, ma'am. 17. Present, ma'am. 18. Present, ma'am. 19. 19 present, ma'am. 20. 20 present, ma'am. 21. 21 present, ma'am. 
Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.